nawong. Sa pagsaulog sa aginaldo, mag-awit na gani kita o gloria in excelsis Dio. O tungod kay ang bispiras sa aginaldo o ang misa de galio mismo sa kapuntagon. Oportunidad nga gihatag nato kini nagdala pabalik sa atong kalipay sa atong pagpaabot sa pagkatao sa Ginoo. Na siguro ko daghang mga rason diha sa atong kalipay. Tungod kay December bisan ginagmay siguro may bonus. <laughs> Tungod kay December bisan simple lamang pero may family reunion. Pero ang atong hinungdan sa dakong kalipay mao ang atong pagsaulog sa dakong gugma sa Dios more than 2000 years ago iya gipadala ang yang anak o ang yang pagkatao moya atong gihimaya gisaulog si Kristo anak ni Mama Mary niabot aron matud ba ang Dios uban kanato mao nga bisan pa dunay covid Salamat, we survive, or hopefully we will revive. Pero ang atong pagsalik kay Ninyo Jesus mo ay nagdala o dakong paglaon. Matod pa, we should not have fear, we should only have faith. Kay nga naman, kay diha sa atong experience yan. Kining ninyo nga natawo nga atong nakilala diya kay Senyor Santo Ninyo. Atong gihapon pa si Dunggan pagabot sa Abril next year. Kaya nga naman, kay Saulogon sa Tibuok, Pilipinas, labi na sa Cebu, ang unang misa o unang bunyak nga natabo din sa Cebu. Dako nga kalipay kay nga naman, kay pinaagi ni Ninggugma sa Diyos, kita nga natuo kay Kristo na himong mga anak sa Dios o nasalig kita siyang gugma alang natong tanan. Na siguro ko sulod sa Tibuok Tuig 2021, daghan pang mga higayon nga kita magkatigom aron himayao ng Dios Pasalamatan ang ginoo sa iyang kasa o pagampo nga the gift we receive is the gift we give. Kanyong tanan karon pa lang, no? Bisan pa doon ay COVID. Matod pa ni Pope, if we try to discover that within our hearts, doon ay pagtuo, doon ay paglaom, doon ay pagsalik. If we try to discover that within our hearts, doon ay pang invitation, sa collaboration, panag-iusa, panag-inig sa unay, then we would have discovered nga bisan pa doon ay pandemic nga COVID, there is also the antibody nining Christian faith and Christian virtues nga mo'y maghatag pusog, maghatag paglaong, maghatag kalipay na itong tanan. Kaninyo mga kaigsunan at ang viewers sa CCTN, Ang akong pagbati, Merry Christmas, ninyong tanan.
next live coverage of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Dr. Jean Rafanan and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene Adnanit Avila and family, Mr. and Mrs. Lorenzo Bok and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate in this Holy Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously reveal the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and never. Amen. A reading from the book of Prophet Isaiah. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son, you will conceive and bear. No razor shall touch his head, for his boy is consecrated to God from the womb. If it is who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Palestine, 
the woman went and told her husband, a man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, you will be with child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up and the Lord blessed him. The spirit of the Lord steered him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. Oh, my God, rescue me from the hell. shall be filled with your praise and I will sing your glory for you are my hope O Lord my trust O God from my youth on you I depend shall be filled with your praise and I will sing your glory I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord oh God I will tell your singular justice Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. My mouth shall be filled with your praise.
Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as a priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have the joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers toward the children, and the disobedient of the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were awaiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his, Elizabeth, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. I'd like to propose this question to everyone. Very basic question. Does God listen to our prayers? And the most important question is, does God give exactly the things we, we ask for? Maybe not all the time. Sisters and brothers, in today's gospel reading, we have here a narrative of the birth of John the Baptist. Actually, in the gospels, there are only two narratives which gives us the story of the birth of a person. One is, of course, of Jesus, which we will be reading Christmas time. And the other is our gospel reading for today, the narrative on the birth of John the Baptist. That's how important this person is in the history of salvation, in the birth of Jesus. But here in the gospel, we have here two parents of John, Zechariah and Elizabeth. Both of them are already in their old age. Worse, Elizabeth was barren. For you to know, in the time, in, during their time, to be advanced in years with no child is like a curse. 
curse, meaning to say no blessing at all. And yet, we see here, Zechariah continued his ministry in serving the Lord, in serving God. He was never hopeless until such a time came that his prayers were answered. And we hear the words of Angel Gabriel, your prayers had been heard. And I think, first and foremost, this is like a consolation for all of us now who have been praying, especially in view of this pandemic. We should not lose that sense of hope. We keep on praying. We keep on believing. Let's always pray, regardless if we see a result or not. Because the other side of prayer is actually this. There is one famous philosopher in the person of Soren Kierkegaard, he has this to say, to pray is not to change God. To pray is to change the one praying. That's why we said, not all the things that we pray for are actually given by God. Because in the first place, God has already, has already known whatever, what's the best for us. It's like I have this experience when I was studying still there in Manila, in the University of Santo Tomas, I came to know this friend who was already in her 70s. When we first met, she asked me, Father, Father, pray for me so that I could have a boyfriend. She was really serious. Of course, not to offend her, I told her, yes, Tita, I will pray for you, don't worry. But the problem is, every time we met, she would always say, Father, saan na? Bakit wala pa rin hanggang ngayon? Where? Why? You know, I was like, mm, it's like I'm, I was already fed up. I just told her, Hi, Nakotita. What I'm praying now for you is you will get used to it, to what you have and what you are, so that you would no longer ask for someone who will be your boyfriend. Para bang masasanay ka na lang na ganyan. Wag ka na lang... <laughs> Again, the prayers that we ask, not all of them are actually good. I have met someone, Father, Father, pray for me so that this suertres number would be, <laughs> I would win this number. We don't know what we are asking for. We have an expression, be careful what you ask for. And I think the best prayer that we could have each and every day is, Father, Father, this is what I want. This is what I wish for my life and for my family. But I know deep in my heart that you have the best plans for me and for us. Please let me realize all of them and let me fulfill them in my life. Hence, as we continue in this Eucharistic celebration, brothers and sisters, let us all continue to pray. Let's not lose that sense of hope. And above all, let us also bear in mind that while we ask for so many things, God has already known the best for us. And that is what, should we, what we ask for each and every day. Because by then, despite the crisis that we are now facing and experiencing, still there would be joy in this joyful season. Amen. Let us now offer our intentions. God is never outdone in generosity. In due time, He will grant the aspirations of His people. So in confidence, we implore Him. We say, Lord, hear our prayer. that even in the midst of uncertainties, we may continue to trust in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like Zechariah and Elizabeth, may parents welcome children with love and responsibility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that there may be many young people who will generously respond to the call to the priestly and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may heal the sick and bring comfort to the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our departed ones may be welcomed into the joy of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our individual intentions. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you all these prayers, especially those in our hearts, yet we fail to speak by our lips. As we also ask you that whatever you plan for all of us may be brought to their fruitful completion. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altars, that what we bring despite our weakness may be sanctified by your power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift you up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sana, oh 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and say, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, May the Phyllis Auxiliary and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints with San Pedro Calungsod, who have pleased you all throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. We offer to each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be to everyone. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, sisters and brothers, behold Jesus. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O oh my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure through Christ our Lord. Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata. 
God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, St. Raphael the Archangel, St. Rock, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, St. Pedro Calungsod. Let's now honor our Blessed Mother. Sampiterne Deus, qui gloriosi virginis matris Mariae corpus et animam, ut dignum fili tui habitaculum i vici mere retur, Spiritus Sancto cooperante preparasti, daut cuius commemorazione letamur, eius pia intercessione ad instantibus malis, et a morte perpetua liberamur, Per iundem Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Divinum Auxilium Maniat Semper Nobiscum. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Once again, once we pray, we do not change God. Once we pray, it should change us who are praying. And may your almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go and bring the peace, the joy, and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Church of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and Family, Dr. Jean Rafanan and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene Adnanit Avila and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Lorenzo Bok and Family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and Family. Discover the beauty of the Philippines 